Today I will be unboxing my napkin haul from ninniesnapkins.com but I'll be doing a lot more because I'll be unboxing the possibilities of napkins in your art journal and mixed media pieces. Nicole will be sharing the love. She's given us a coupon code fun February and you'll get 10% off all your purchases from now till the end of February. The link to Ninny's napkins is in the description box below. So today I got my box of napkins from ninniesnapkins.com and in a minute I'm going to open this up. Now full disclosure I have opened it already and I've looked at them and I've kind of prepared for this unboxing video because not only am I going to show you the napkins to let you know what you can get but I'm also going to go through the napkins and brainstorm. I'm going to give you ideas for ways to use them. I'm going to talk about sizes that might work, uh, substrates that you can use, potentially stencils or sentiment packs that you can use that would go together with this. When I open a box or get new supplies, ideas come to me. And I think of ways to use them. I think of things that I have that I can use with them. And when I open up the box and take everything out, I write down those ideas, those first impressions, if you will, before everything gets all put away. So there is a lot in this box, and I'm just going to put them to the side. Now, you do get a packing slip, and you can use this to keep track of the ideas. So this napkin is called Happy Little Titmouse. And when you get your napkins, the first thing you're going to want to do is open them up to full size to see exactly what you have in the way of elements and, and the size of things. Are they all looking the same way? Do you have them looking? Do you have the inverse? Because sometimes you do. Now, fortunately, when you're selecting the napkin in Ninny's napkin site, she often shows the opened image so you can get a good idea from that but when you're at home you want to look at the piece see the size and start thinking about which substrates can you use it for what size will work and one of the things that i create are these window templates so this one is for an atc which is artist trading card and I'll just put it over top of it and I can see, well, that would make an interesting composition. Here, if I put it over here, I have another interesting one. So I can look at this and decide, here's the five by seven window. That would look beautiful on a five by seven piece. If I have, you know, I've got some cards that are six by six. You know, you can take the tag and put it on there, but it's easier to really see what you have taking the window. Here's my four by four. These are all things that I create. These are my four by four canvas boards. Here's roughly the shape of I believe this is a size eight tag. I don't have one cut for that. Three by five. And I can see, and then I will write that down. Now, for the purpose of the video, I just wrote these things down on post-it notes. And I'm not gonna keep the post-it notes stuck to this because I'm afraid that the glue is going to deteriorate the napkin. But we have the shipping list. So I'm going to just write down my ideas on here and then I have them. So when I'm stuck, I can go back and say, well, what did I think at different times? Right off the bat too, I, one of my latest um, sentiment packs is called Winged Wonders. That would work wonderfully well. And we have 12 projects and with a different winged wonder sentiment that I'm going to shrink down for each of those. 
love this this one would be a good blue background I'm just gonna set that there this one is called Helene and friends I'm just gonna open it quickly and we see all these chickens and instantly the saying came to me which came first the chicken or the egg and I can see using this as an insta background on whatever size substrate an art journal page this is my five by or seven by ten I also have my 9 by 12 I could have a panel and then do a do some collage eggs on there or collage chickens with my gel prints. I can do some chickens, you know, on to an ATC. Let's see the use my template. So I'll, you know, when I'm flipping through my napkins, I will grab these templates and test it out because you want it to match and I can cut out these elements and mix. I could put three chickens on there. This one is leopard. And it is, I love the colors. You got kind of a burnt sienna and different browns. Again, this would be a great Insta background. Do a cat theme. If you had a leopard, a free printable leopard or stamped cats, Tim Holtz's cats would be good. You could have a border of that. So all these ideas you can use and when you have two napkins at a time it's amazing how many projects you can make using just two napkins and I love that you don't have to buy a whole pack now Nicole and in these napkins there is a the last shipment in this one we're getting some of these round ones now this one definitely vintage vibe to it it will make a nice insta background i can see combining it ripping it up combining it with some vintage printables also these i think would look good you can put it on a corner maybe mixing it with some dollar store doilies so this one is called rose de pretemps and it's french and i probably just butchered the pronunciation. My French husband will be so sad. This one is Festive May. This Lily of the Valley. I love that green color. I can see having this at the bottom of an art journal page and then maybe, 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 maybe I have some napkins with bees here. We have this one with the bees, cutting out the bees and having the bees in the background. I have other napkins that have bees. So I'm gonna write that down on my list. Or I could put butterflies or dragonflies that I have from stamps. I'm just writing that in, whatever ideas occur to me. This one is citrus. Love the colors there. And you can, again, you have, you can use part of it, make a nice magnet. And I can see cutting out these elements and then being able to use them, you know, make a pitcher of lemonade. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade and use those. So I'm 
So quotes or sentiments or stencils. What do you have that you can use with it? This one's called Ladybirds and I love that green color. Very subtle. Right there. So you can capture part of that. So I cut around this. Put it down even as it is. Sometimes you just use the napkin. It's the Insta background. And then I can add, I've got stamped ladybugs. This could go just in the corner. Mixed with other, another napkin, a larger focal image. This one's called Feather Mix. Very unique because of its, it's kind of in those, those pink tones. This one also goes with my Winged Wonders sentiment pack. I can take these feathers and cut out for them and make a dress for a Julie Nutting doll. I can make wings for, for a magazine focal image that I'm using or a stenciled one. Or I can just have the feathers create the background and then have feathers. I've got feather stencils from the crafters workshop. There's a whole variety of them. Different feathers, I can combine that, put that with modeling paste and then combine it with some collaged napkins, napkin feathers. This one is to the beach. And we again, we have four of these. The five by seven is too small. This might be a larger piece. There's my seven by 10. I might put that on there and then build texture on the empty space. This would also work well for a card, my six by six cards. In there, I could have this part and then combine it with either shells and see things from stencils. Again, the Crafters Workshop has them or some shells from a napkin. This one is called Shells of the Sea and we have some lovely shells that I can, once I remove the excess plies, glue down onto copy paper or cardstock, your choice, and then I can cut out these shells and layer them across the bottom, across the ocean. And again, I've got Ocean Commotion Sentiment Pack that would go with both of these napkins. So you can take something that isn't going to fill a whole page. That can be here and then I can have shells underneath right across here sentiment and then I can develop some texture with my stencils. This one is Caro Indigo and I love the pattern. This would be make a nice border across the top and the bottom of my page with a focal image that has some blue or pink in it. This one instantly when I saw it, I, I thought maybe I'm going to make a dress for my little, um, I want to do kind of a Japanese kimono and I'm thinking that might work for that. This one is called Thea and it's these beautiful daisies that are as big as my hand. They look great on a dark blue background. Now this will work, you know, not really on a four by four. We're looking at a larger substrate. Five by seven doesn't quite work either. So we're looking at, you know, a larger substrate. This one's eight by eight. So if I put this on here, 
I can kind of wrap it around a little bit and this gives me part from here to here because I'm going to water cut just this daisy. This allows me to put texture and build up pattern and make an interesting background. And then for the daisy, I can overpaint it. Use my gesso and my white and my green and overpaint it so it doesn't look like I've decoupaged down a napkin. I've just glued down a napkin. It looks like I've painted it. But I love, love, love the size of that. So, you know, an 8x8, here's an 8x10, that would also work. These are canvas boards. You can pop these into what I call, for, what they're called format frames. So that would look nice. And then you have lots of places for texture to build up that page. So that's called Thea. This one is called Marilla, and it's a dark background. But I can see, using this, having this as a strip in the middle, I would, could even see putting, like, da uh, if I have a daisy stamp or stencil, stenciling that on in, with white, I think that would just really pop. Or this could be an Insta background, and then you'd kind of gesso over it, brayer over it, knock it back a little bit, but then you have all those colors coming through. So that one's Marilla. This one's called Bless This Home, and I love this little part right here. I don't need much more. So I think what I might do is do this, you know, cut out several of these because of course we have four identical ones in the napkin. I might cut out a couple of them or put one on this side and then build up texture on this side. So you have a bless this home, put it in a frame or do it, you know, on a cradled wood panel of whatever size you can get them. I don't like the square. I like the eight by 10. I can also see maybe doing a couple of these, two or three of these, and then some circles in these colors with pattern from my various stencils. It's so funny because instantly when I saw this, I didn't thought, oh, what am I going to use with it? But now I'm having lots of ideas. I could use my buffalo plaid. I'm taking an idea from the napkin designer. I'm going to, I can use my buffalo plaid stencil with it. I can use, I've got some daisy or flower stencils and I can use the uh, removing paint through a stencil or stencil with white to get a very faded background. So you can get design tips from the napkin. Oh, and I'm looking at this. If I cut this out with this dark background and then this on the front, easy peasy. This one is called Elizabeth. And again, de definitely that muted, soft, vintage kind of look. So open it up. And right away here you can see we have two of the same and two of the same. So I can cut these and mix and match them. get an off-white or vintage background. Use some of my script stamps in the background. This one is so adorable. It, and right off the bat, I see I like how it, with the blue background, so I'm gonna potentially use that. This, I, when I saw it, I thought, oh, I've got people who, who love cats. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to turn it into a card. I'm going to do the background in probably blue. I have some little flower stencils I can add. I can make bigger bees on there. And, you know, color up the background and just keep it as it is. Or cut them apart. So that one's called Cats and Bees.
This one, Birdhouse in Spring. And again, this looks great on a with blue background, but this could be an Insta background, and then I could build a bigger birdhouse. I could cut down out this element on there. Or maybe I just use it for color inspiration. This one's called Denim Rose for obvious reasons. That's, but this would be, here's my four by four. You can play with, offset them in different ways and then overpaint on top of that if you wanted to. Or this could become a dress for a Julie Nutting doll. This napkin is called Allium and I oh, love the colors here. The green with these, the fuchsias and that. I just love this. And I can see taking this and having this in the background. You know, not a big fan of green, but I'm loving the greens on this. I can mix this with actually this napkin in the background. You know, when I'm when I'm stuck and I'm looking for ideas, I will open up my napkins and I just sit there and I move things. See, there we go. We have some of that above. We also have the onion blossom stencil from the crafters workshop. We can have that um, being above there or just have this rolling down here and then have a sentiment that floats across. But I love, love, love the colors of this, even if I just use it as circles. Oh, there's a stencil called Starflower Net. That would look awesome in the background. It would really play off of this really, really well. This one is unique. It's called The Leaf. Love the color. You got that texture, the veining of the leaf. So this I can see using as an Insta background or part of it. You can have various strips put in or shapes, cut out circles with this, glue this down onto copy paper or uh, whatever um, cardstock, I guess is what I'm looking for, the words, and put that on. And then can you put, how does that look on it? Try, you know, a focal image one as well. But some of these napkins, they make that Insta background. They are giving you a color scheme, this gray, burgundy, pink, beautiful color, color scheme. Now we have a bunch of Easter related ones. This is hair cabbage. And again, I would cut it right here love the daffodils. There are daffodil stencils you can use. I can just cut out the bunnies and the daffodils and get rid of the green cabbage part if that's what I like. You can mix it with the allium. This one is super, super cute. This would be a nice one to use pretty much as a card on a six by six card um, on an art journal page. And I'm looking at this and I've got, we've got all these black and white eggs and I'm thinking, oh, that would be cute to do some black and white eggs. Get out my stencils, make egg shapes. How easy is that? nobody needs to draw and then 
make that my background and then use this rabbit on here. Oh, it's called Oh My Rabbit. I can see this being used. I like it with the black and white. I like the idea of making some Easter eggs that are colored. The other one, that I have another napkin here. This one's called Colorful Rabbits. And look at that, you know, you can cut this rabbit out and put it on top of this background and you've got that colored Insta background right there. I have to write that black and white black and white eggs. This one is called Hair Hunt. Now they're smaller so automatically this is for the 4x4s and the iCADs and the ATCs but you can cut those out. So this one, what I would do is peel off the backing, glue it down onto cardstock or copy paper and cut them out and then you have ephemera to use however you want and you can mix and match. I like this rabbit. I, you know, you can pick whichever ones you want, but you have tons of little things. These also make like, you can make little gift tags, or these are good for bookmarks. You can buy wooden bookmarks, you can make paper bookmarks. So napkins that have lots of mini pictures are good for those kind of projects. This one is called Ruby in the Meadow. And look at that. I love, right off the bat, I am going to steal this soft lemon yellow or butter yellow and this green that looks like hooker's green. That color combo, I really love that soft look. You can also just cut out the flowers and use those. And you'll note that we have the rabbits are looking different ways. So you have a little bit more ability to change up the composition if you wanted. I could put three rabbits together in there looking at something else and then use some stencils or uh, stamped images to doing that. But I love this. I think this will make a nice Easter card. I can put that on there. The colors are almost perfect. This is like an Insta card. You know, put a hoppy Easter or follow the bunny. Definitely going to be using Ruby in the Meadow. This one, another one that I can see using as a card. This is called Isa. Love the look. They're kind, she's kind of looking different ways. So I would cut, this is a, the, my 9 by 12 underneath here. I would cut, you know, two thirds of this, this one. That would be my thing. And then this part is open for me to build a colorful background. Put it on a wood panel to have a, this is my 8x8 eight eight wood panel. There, that's perfect. And then you have room for texture. And I can decoupage this around the edges too, right? So some of that is going around. And then the rest is color. Love it on the with the dark blue here. Or mix and match, add more flowers as you either stencil flowers from your stencils. Another oh so cute one. Now this guy is so adorable. We have little puppies with rabbit ears and then there are eggs. This is called dogs and Ca candy dogs. And I think this would make a beautiful card. In fact, I know somebody who is going to get this. We have a lot of white space on this napkin. So 
and I probably would do this is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We've got blue and green back here, so I probably would continue that, and then I don't have to worry about fussy cutting so much. And then find some kind of saying about puppies and Easter or chocolate. Have that background there. That would make a good card. It would make a nice little... Um, there's a five by seven, like five by seven canvas boards would be probably perfect for this. Exactly. That's, that's going to be five by seven. So even that I can write down here that I'm going to use the five by seven substrate. Right? Get the ideas out. And you know, sometimes I have no ideas and then I pull it out the next time and it's like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Or, you know, capitalize on those. This is called Modern Feathers and we can use this one much in the same way as the other feather one that I talked about. But I love the colors here. And look how it pops. I'm going to zoom out. Pops on this blue background. I can cut. I'm thinking I just got a flash here square, square, you know, or glue this down, peel off the excess layer, glue it onto cardstock, cut them out. You have ephemera that you can use multi-pieces or just one. Just add one feather. I love this, this color. But once you cut them out, you can play with the comp composition. Here's another beach one, beach cabin. This is very soft and pale. So sometimes the ones with dark and some, but we have the cabin. There's the waves stencil. We can do some wave stencil on here. And then you have lots of room on the nine by 12 to add Life's a beach. With this one, I definitely would glue this down either first onto the page or glue it onto um, copy paper because you, your background is going to be inevitably darker than that. And then make a nice, you could do sunset or sunrise behind it instead. So we have two houses here, but this one is, you're going to be using a bigger substrate. And you know, if I'm using an art journal page, you can use a wood panel. If this is something you want to hang on a wall, you can use a canvas. I like the idea of putting a sunset on here. So I'm going to add that to. The first time I looked at this, I didn't have any ideas, and now I have a few ideas. So then we have, we have blue. Blue cats and do blue dogs. So again, you can cut these individual ones out. The, the cats you know, I'm a cat person more than a dog person, but this would make a nice Insta background. You can you pair it with Tim Holtz's Crazy Cats, Crazy Dogs. Have this as the background. Have that as the focal image. Cut these apart. These would be so cute, like little bookmarks. Make it make a background on a card with a cat sentiment of some sort or dogs. This one's Klimt Adele and Klimt Kiss. And I love the deep gold color here. Goes really well against the royal blue. I know Stamperia has um, scrapbook pages that uh, and books that are the art, the, you know, Klimt artists and stuff. And so you can mix and match it with that. I can see taking this person out from the background and using 
using her and having a sassy saying from my sentiment sassy sayings sentiment pack this one I'm loving the colors and I can definitely that golden yellow with the blue and just some of the artwork there this one I'm going to have to think about but I know from in the past some of the ones that was like I'll never use that napkin are one of the first ones I end up using we have this one which is vinyl bellissimo this would make I want to get into making coasters and I just ordered some wood coasters four by four so that would can go on there good wine good times this could be a wall plaque you could turn it into go along that one down the bottom that can be on here just play with it but I definitely would you know be cutting some of that out this would be good vintage one there was a napkin I have that have grapes that I could pair with this. I know there's also stencils that had grapes. This one, we got some farmhouse American flag. Now you can use it as it is. I can just use the stars um, uh, as an Insta background. I can use some of this. On a strip I think that you know maybe how I will be using it you can do a 4th of July um, thing but well, there we have we can make kind of a, a border use that oh I like that use those elements and we have this one I can also take a page from this and just paint my own border using the red the white and then use that so again the napkins are there to inspire you you can use them as focal images you can use them as backgrounds you can use cut them apart use turn them into ephemera uh, that you can mix and match add them in with your stencils now this one I fell in love with instantly when I opened it up. It's called Sunny Flowers. You know, you can use it corner here. This one I can totally see in my, this totally matches um, several home decor items that I bought last year. Totally fits that color scheme. So I can see making a welcome sign using this. This is my 8x8. Eight eight. I think I might even go bigger. These canvas boards are great because you can just, they can rest, you know, lean against something and then swap them out as the season. Yeah, I want a little bit more um, background to put a bigger sentiment or um, something. But this one, definitely. And then I would overpaint. the sunflowers to turn it into mine. I've got some leaf stencils that I can add to add texture to this. You can also take this and cut out the different elements and make a wreath on a larger canvas. Oh, there is a crafter's workshop stencil says you are my sunshine and I could have a sign I could have that use that stenciled and then cut these apart and decoupage them down and make I have 10 by 20 I think canvas board love the color combo combination too and then you can just use these colors you've got that butter yellow and this red and this coral 
they and this green take those and use that to teach yourself about color theory and how, what works this one lay tournesol but if you do sunflowers you probably will get that love I can see that going through the middle of a page here we go this is my 7 by 10 it's almost exactly perfect by the time I add a little bit of border I can just add some right across the thing and then a sentiment love that add some bees add a dragonfly this might make a nice uh, there's my 8 by 10 4 by 4 coaster magnet So now at Ninny's Napkins, Ninny and Nicole is set a, getting a lot of these uh, what are called pocket tissues and you get five of them. I only have two, but you get five of each one. So you get lots of images. So again, look at the open page. Now some of it's cut off and that's okay. And then take your templates and then you can see, you know, they're a perfect size for the ATC, for, you know, the four by four napkin. I would cut that around and then this would make one, two, three, four coasters for a set of four matching coasters. Um, it, it would make four magnets. You can make ATCs. You can make uh, mini zines with different images that are this size. So this one is called a rose for you. So again, if you've got five of them, these are great for multiple makes, for craft fair makes. Um, because you're making a lot, these would be good for bookmarks as well. So that one's a rose for you. If you are a horse lover, this one is called Amy and Lucy. And again, I love this image, so that could be on there. If you've got a horse lover, that could be, you could use that or a couple of them on the corner of a card. The size is it's deceptive because you think these pocket tissues are really tiny and sometimes those images are almost bigger than some of the other napkins so you really have to play with it so we have three different ones in there so you can mix and match these are great for tags gift tags this one is called Ava and I love again the color of it this anemone total four by four magnet look at that put a plot a sentiment on there and away you go I would use a stencil I've got a leaf stencil like that and I can put that in texture paste modeling paste and away we go there's another one different but the same make coasters make magnets look how nice it looks on the blue background kind of wish I got uh, five of these there's a few of these that I wish I had more of and stuff they're also these are great for the mini composition books do that on there that would be beautiful for a mini composition book put a sentiment on so that one is called Ava 
we saw this B one, which would make a beautiful Insta background. I could plot that down on here. That would be the Insta background. Maybe do some modeling paste underneath with the honeycomb stencil. It could be a background for a composition book as well. Or you could cut out the individual beads, glue them down and use them as ephemera. This one is called Convalaria. The Lily of the Valley. So we have, again, this is perfect for these magnets. Four by fours, five by sevens. I think I, there's a five by seven. You can get, sometimes you can get the five by sevens in magnets. So that could be in there and then I put the sentiment. So again, great for craft fair makes because you get so many on one thing. Ain't, ain't nobody here but us chickens. I love the size of these. Oh, we got a whole family. So cute. See, again, you know, you got variety on there. So you can have multiple chickens. You can pair it up with something else. Put one on the magnet. Composition book. That one's called Etta. This one is Eddie in love. We've got tiny little rabbits. I like a lot of these. They're, they're very white background. So we've got some larger and smaller ones. And again, I glue these down, cut them off, glue them down onto copy paper, and then cut it out. Fussy cut with scissors. It's once you've supported it, put it on cardstock copy paper, it's stronger. Then you can glue them on. Create an egg background. Or we had oh, there it is. <laughs> that in the background and the bunny on top. Nice little Easter Easter gift. Bookmark. Perfect size. You can get wooden bookmarks off of Amazon and I will link the substrates as many as I can in the description box below through my Amazon store. Um, you know, just know that I do get a small commission when you shop through any of those the affiliate links. This one, lots of chickens, they're tiny, make it a nice Insta background. This one's Hen and Toast. The size, it's a little small. Just never know. This one's called Hustle and Bustle. And I love these ladybugs, the bright colors. This would be nice as to use as a border. This would be nice to even just put on, on here. And then you can collage a larger ladybug on top. Your own focal image. Now we've seen Isa before in the larger napkin. Now we have a smaller one that is perfect size for a composition book. Wouldn't that make a lovely Easter gift? Now the thing about these pocket tissues, I did discover that they most napkins have two excess layers. These tend to have three.
the past ones that I've done tend to have three excess layers. Let's just, there we go. So you can see there's one, two, three extra layers. So you want to pull out all three extra layers. You can use those for your crafting needs. But that would be, oh, I love that idea. Or in a fridge magnet as a little gift, a little can, or coasters. I know that Nicole at Ninny's Napkins will soon be carrying, if not in already, polyvine varnish, which you can varnish the coasters, and I believe they're heat resistant. So I'm looking forward to doing that, which is why I ordered some of the wood blanks. This one is called La Lavender for obvious reasons. Cute little butterfly. Again, that would look lovely on an art journal page or a mini composition book, magnet, or as part of a bigger piece. This one, we I have this in the bigger size as well. It's called Lucky Frog. But here you have eight of these images. And I think that would look so cute on a mini composition book. So adorable. We have on an ATC. You can have one, different backgrounds. You can play with the different backgrounds. You can have three of them on a five by seven and kind of layer, cut them out, layer them on top of each other and then have the background. You gotta kiss a lot of toads before you find your prints. And these might be the toads that you're kissing. So, but you got eight images times five napkins. This one is called Mayflower. We've got Lily of the Valley here. We have, again, so when you open it up, you've got two images. But I love that soft color. I can see cutting these out, using these on a larger substrate. And I might use from several napkins and layer it up across the bottom or make a wreath base and that would be some filler and then I would use some of the flower napkins, cut out the flowers and put them in. So this is going to be the greenery of my wreath and then the flowers, the sunflowers like that sunflower one we liked could be on there or there's Gerbera daisies or whatever. So those This one, again, love the colors, love poppies, but we have so many images. Here, we can totally mix and match. Here we have the greenery, and then we can cut out these poppies and build that into the wreath. This one is called Mahana. But what I like is this dark blue, gray blue, and that red. So again, put lots of them on a larger substrate, You put one or two on a smaller substrate. That would look lovely on a composition book. And these little composition books are great because you just throw them in your purse, they're the perfect size. I've gone through so many of them. They make perfect gifts, they make perfect craft fair sales. And with all these napkins, you have such variety. You don't even have to go out of the way. This is adorable. These are, it's called parakeets. We've got tiny little images. So I would, again, be cutting these out and using them as collage items with one or two. Make my background using stencil material, stencils. We have that one. We have Mix and match. I would love this in a bigger napkin, Nicole. These parakeets are adorable. And parakeets seem to be on trend, as do Lily of the Valley. 
And the last one here is Tiger. So good Insta background. You can have that, put a cat, some of Tim Holtz cake. Crazy Cats on there. So, I hope you found that useful. I hope it gave you some ideas on ways to use uh, your napkins, thinking out of the box, ways to organize, ways to brainstorm your ideas. If you found an idea here that you really liked, put it down in the comment section. What's the best tip you learned in this video? Which napkin do you absolutely need to have? Here's the coupon. What do you create Use the with napkins? Fun February and get 10% off all your purchases. The link is in the description box below.